Christian, thank you so much for joining us here at Super Return International. Thanks, Emma. So, Pimco is very well known, fixed income manager in public markets, but you also have a strong presence in alternatives. So, how is your platform designed with all of that in mind? Sure, no, thanks, Emma. It's, it's actually designed as an extension of the Pimco fixed income franchise. And the way that we think about private credit is it is truly an extension of, of credit in, in general. Many of our clients have buckets for illiquid and liquid credit and are looking for the best risk-adjusted returns and opportunities across public and private. So it's not one business versus another business. The two coexist alongside each other and use the resources of both sides. And that's a hallmark is that we have the ability to use those credit analysts or sovereign analysts or municipals analysts or whoever it is on the public side that has relevant expertise and resources and connections and et cetera uh, to help us to underwrite an opportunity or source an opportunity on the private side. So using all those resources. Exactly. But as president, you have a global perspective. Mm. So, you know, across the platform. So what are you seeing in terms of key trends in alternatives? Sure. Well, one thing that we're seeing is a snowballing of the opportunities in private markets outside of the U.S. So the U.S. is really where you first started to see the opportunities arise, especially in the corporate sector and direct lending and the corporate sector. Um, but we're starting to see more and more of that outside. Now, in Europe, that's been, it's been a number of years, but it has been accelerating. And now, even in, in Asia and Australia, you're starting to see the growth of non-public credit opportunities uh, coming out. So it really is exciting to see this global trend emerging. Indeed, so private markets, we've seen a huge growth in them over the past decade. What do you see as driving in that? And what, in your view, has caused that development? Yeah, sure. I, I'd say it's two things. One is investor preference, and one is the uh, need on the part of the borrowers. So on investor preference, you see more and more clients realizing that they have some tolerance for illiquidity, for private illiquid situations in their portfolio. Uh, clearly, the relative value between public and private changes over time, and, and that's something that we're very sensitive to. Uh, but investors are, are willing to deploy into private illiquid markets. The other is the banks. Banks are exiting many of these markets, pulling back from them, changing the way that they operate in these markets. And you still have borrowers who need access to credit. And so non-bank providers of credit, alternative asset managers, et cetera, are coming in to bridge that gap. Also, I guess, given the high yields available in public markets, where do you see the greatest opportunities in private markets being with that in mind and that landscape? Too? No, it's a, it's a great point, Emma. I mean, the yields are much higher in public markets right now. And there's a lot of interesting opportunities in just regular way, investment grade, corporate credit, structured credit, liquid mortgage credit. You know, these yields are higher than they've been in many, many years. Spreads are tight in some of those areas, but still the all in yield is, is quite compelling. And you don't have to give up the uh, the liquidity. You get the benefit of having the liquidity in the portfolio, which which really does matter. And, and the opportunity cost of illiquidity needs to be considered. So everything that we do on the private side has to be aware of what's going on on the public side and the relative value differences. And so where we're most actively deploying on the private side is A, where we're seeing emerging stress and cracks in the system. So that would be things like where direct lending is starting to uh, deteriorate and where capital solutions to stress corporate borrowers are very interesting. Then, especially where the banks are directly pulling out right now, residential mortgage credit, commercial real estate lending, some consumer credit, etc. There, that's more of an investment grade type of profile. It's not rated investment grade, but it has that, that risk profile of very low expected uh, default rates. And there you're able to deploy into less liquid opportunities, uh, but at high single digit type of yields. So arguably a more complex and more competitive environment that, that your expertise needs to be deployed in. That's what we would say is, is that the, the private credit opportunity set as it, as it emerges and, and moves into these more and more verticals is going to be more and more complex. And it's not just more complex from underwriting, but also managing the assets. When you're, when you're buying a billion dollar pool of residential mortgages, uh, that is, you know, can be thousands of different residential mortgages, you need to have systems, infrastructure, legal and compliance, teams, 
the whole uh, infrastructure that, that needs to be set up to be able to deploy into these. It's exciting, but it is more complex. You've, you've talked about asset-based or speciality finance being yes. a key opportunity with yeah. all of that in mind and then the expert teams you have, perhaps that's right. That's that where to really go. is the new, the next wave of private credit is, is away from direct lending and into all of these other verticals. It's going to be a more diversified opportunity set, which will ultimately be a better uh, opportunity set uh, to deploy into, but it is a more complicated one. It's one that we at PIMCO feel particularly excited about. What do you hope to take away from Super Return International? There's 5,000 people here this year. Yeah. I guess some key conversations. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, the, the conference is amazing. There are so many uh, different people here. It's a great way to meet clients. It's also a great way just to meet some of our, of our peers. And I think that's the most uh, interesting thing is to hear kind of, there is there is a, a lot of agreement that things are starting, the, the winds are starting to shift around private credit into new opportunities, um, but also uh, some fundamental erosion in the core direct lending opportunity set. Well, I hope it's a very valuable experience for you. Thank you so All much right, for sharing thanks, your Emma. insights with us. Nice yeah, to see you. A pleasure.